I feel like the only thing that inspires me is heartbreak. Is my heart breaking and I feel like I've lost all my poetry. All my words are hidden in trees whose tops are too far for me to reach, but I keep trying to climb them anyways because God knows I miss my words. I miss my fire. You know, I had fire once. Like the, I don't need nobody, I'm gonna do this thing. Watch me run kind of fire. Watch me climb Greyhound buses with pen and paper in tow kind of fire. Watch the sky turn from prairie morning remembrance to Atlantic coastline sunsets for daydreamers sitting on cliffs, leaning into the wind, praying to be washed clean by the sound of the waves crashing, but remembering the sound of dishwashers covering the noise of the violent screaming, we were the shifty kids. The hidden quicksand surfers, the married at 17 to escape the shelters, hands in pockets staring at the ground, spare change, please, teenagers. And they never expected much from our whiskey-chipped cheekbones, our split-lip sing-alongs to police van sirens, our brittle-bellied back-alley dumpster dinner times. We were the needle in the haystack children, only considered missing if someone was looking. And no one ever really came looking, except eyes peering from slow-moving vans along highways stained with tears. Our calendars were the scars that marked our bodies, catalogs to keep track of the days so as to not forget our real names. We never kept our real names, but we knew each other's arms by heart. We knew each other's silhouettes in the dark, swaying side to side in parks, trying to keep warm. We just kept running until the bridges became too tempting, our skin a little too transparent, and then we became the Tuesday morning emergency ward wake-ups, the involuntary commitments, the concerns of gentle 24-hour nurses whose eyes never pushed <gasps> too hard on our bruises. And it was the safest place we'd ever known. And for some of us, it was the last. But now, here I am. Pockets still full of cigarette butts and fingernails chewed to the hope line. Never satisfied to sit silent in glorious moments. I am the limbs frantically flailing across the dance floor to the first song of the night, holding each of the needle in the haystack children. In the moments between my heart breaking and my words falling like promises from the treetops. So I promise that I will never stop looking for you. I feel like one of the most brave and courageous things that we can do as human beings is to love each other no matter how much pain we've experienced, no matter what heartbreak we've felt. And I feel like to me, right now in my life, that is what daring greatly means, to take risks and to love regardless of what the consequences to ourselves might be. And some days, it's just easier to pretend. Some days, it's just easier to pretend. And as a little girl, I learned that daydreams and fantasies could make the world seem like a better place. I could hide inside the giant dollhouse my grandfather made for me and create a landscape all my own. I'd fold myself into the corner cupboard filled with pots and pans, and after closing the door, I'd shut my eyes real tight. <sighs> Breathe deep. Then, suddenly, I would be on a magical flying tall ship headed to India, or I would be the most beautiful porcelain ballerina dancing the Nutcracker in New York City. But the shouting would always awake me from these reveries. And although only a temporary state of distraction, I found my salvation in those moments of freedom. And as a woman, I've learned that these fantasies rarely come true but I still tell myself bedtime stories and have a tendency to drift away into other worlds. So, if you see me standing in the grocery store, staring absentmindedly at the tomatoes, know that I am dreaming of a time when we will pick vegetables from the garden behind our farmhouse. In this world, I am the type of woman who hangs the laundry in the yard wearing a sundress. I am tall and I am always barefoot. And you, you are the type of man who builds forts in the woods with his children, who plants a tree in the forest for each year we've been together because you tell me that flowers in a vase will only wilt, and we, like the trees, will only grow stronger. In this world, 
You are not afraid of standing still, and I am no longer anticipating your leaving. We've made peace with our respective demons, and we visit our families often, and when we fight, it is brilliant and furious, like the summer rainstorms of my childhood that mesmerized me. Watching from window panes as the angry dark clouds lit up the sky while they poured out their tears. My grandfather always told me on those afternoons that God just gets sad too sometimes. But the sky would always clear as quickly as it had darkened and we'd open the windows to the smell of freshly baptized grass. But on this day, when I arrive back in reality, I'm suddenly aware that I've been baptizing the produce in salt water laced with mascara and wishful thinking. And these days, I am the girl who cries in public. I've been visiting lonely late night drive through fast food chains and weeping into processed buffalo strips, and it's my fault. You see, I knew that your backpack had been screaming at you since February. And you'd been tapping your foot so loud it sounded like a freight train was rolling through my bedroom while your one-way ticket lit a campfire in your back pocket. And I've never been the kind of woman that begs her man to stay. But then again, I've only ever known the good riddance, thank God that's over, he didn't really care about me anyway kind of endings. But I love you too much to ask you to stay. So I'm scratching at your beard while kissing your forehead in hopes that a part of you will want to. But the motel room inside my soul, which sheltered you for this short period of time, now has a vacancy sign hung in the window. You've kept the sheets turned back to remind me of where you slept and etched beautiful lacework graffiti into the walls. So I promise that if you ever return to this place, I will have kept it free of vagrants and vermin. There will be a tree planted in the garden for each season you've been gone, and I will meet you there, barefoot, wearing a sundress. Thank you. Thank you.